This tutorial will show you some of the more advanced features of the FPS Creator Segment Editor. As usual, we'll launch the software by double-clicking the executable, and when the Segment Editor loads, we'll maximize it by double-clicking the title bar. Just to get the browser in quickly, we'll click Mesh, which loads in the browser, and to speed up the loading of the browser, we'll Alt-Tab to that application giving all of the CPU process time to its job of loading in quickly. So it comes in, loads in its various media items, and then we can maximize that and cancel. So what we'll show you first is the use of shaders. And for that purpose, we will load in a mesh we'll create a wall mesh using the room my rooms wall a.x click ok to load that mesh into the segment editor use the arrow keys to rotate around so we can place it nicely and neatly up against the north direction we then click change texture and choose our wall texture. Now what you don't see here, but which nonetheless exists, is the other textures that will make up this image if you used a shader. This one that you're looking at now is called D2, which is the diffuse texture that's most commonly used. But associated with this texture, and which you saw us transferring in tutorial 1 was the d.tga and the n.tga these two extra texture files contain the diffuse painting that's the diffuse image but without any shadows and the normals data which will be used by the shader to calculate those shadows later on in real time within the game so we'll click this texture file now the FPS Creator software can automatically extrapolate the file names for the diffuse and the normal maps by selecting uh, the D2 texture. So it simply takes whatever you've got as your file name with underscore D2 and then strip out the 2 to get the D.TGA and then replace the D with the N to extrapolate the normal map texture file name. So you only really need to specify one texture file name for simplicity. Once you've specified your mesh and your texture, you can then select your effect. So we click change effect. The default effect, of course, is no effect. And then we select one of the effects that have been provided. So if I selected something like bump ent, which is short for bump entity, click the FX file, the FX file is the file that stores the effect and click OK. It applies that to the mesh. Now as this is an internal development tool it doesn't quite show you the effect right away. What you've got to do is to save this segment. So for the purpose of demonstration we will save this under a temporary name. So my temp .fps. Click the save button and what the software is doing now it's saving it taking a thumbnail snapshot and then reloading the segment. In the process of reloading it it applies the shader. So as you can see now it's quite different from the D2 texture that we saw in a previous tutorial. It's now actually using the D.TGA texture and the N.TGA texture. These file names will make more sense if you look at tutorial 1 which shows the setting up of the assets before using the segment editor. A thing you should know about the shader, the default shaders that are provided with the software is that it's using a fixed light source approximately 5000 units in the sky which is why the light is hitting it as though from high above. As you can see the base relief here this isn't extra polygon data, it's simply the normals data within one of the textures to create this three-dimensional effect. 
but of course if you went right alongside the mesh you'll notice it's not mesh data at all it's an optical illusion caused by the shader so that's a very quick introduction to how to use shaders in the segment editor